Good day and welcome to the Naked Vocalist podcast, episode one. Numero uno. I am Chris Johnson. And I am Steve Giles. And I can't believe we're actually here after conceiving this a couple of weeks ago and we're actually recording it. So, high five. That was beautiful. So why don't you tell us what the heck we're doing here? Well, as you just quite rightly said, this is a Naked Vocalist podcast. You've probably found us uh, for being on our Facebook page or someone has recommended it to you. But for anyone who hasn't got a clue what this is about, we're hopefully going to give you some useful information. It's for anyone related to singing, whether that be a singer teacher, your professional singer, or you're just somebody that sings for fun. It is all for you. Yeah. And it should hopefully be full of handy stuff, eradicate myths, and fill in the gaps for any of you who feel like something might be missing in your singing world. But the only way that we'll know what the gaps are are if you lot ask us questions or give us topics to explore about anything to do with singing. That could be technique, it could be business, maybe you're a singing teacher and you need to know some maybe teaching techniques. The list goes on and on, but go to the website and the social media sites, which we will tell you about at the end, to get inspiration and then just ask away. And the best thing about this entire situation is that we do not know everything. And that may sound like a a bad thing, but to flip that on the positive, we have some friends. You know, over the years, we've lucky enough to have have made some industry expert friends, if that's what we want to call them. Yeah. And they are more than happy to come on this show and do some stuff with us. We can ask some questions on your behalf or we can ask some questions that we have. But the idea is that we get questions answered. And you don't want to miss those ones. You do not. They're going to be great. In addition to that, this is always going to be free. Which which is a bargain. I think, you know, what's better than free? I don't know, we could pay them to listen to it. Sorry, you didn't want to expect that, were you? That was awful. Pardon me. Carry on. (laughs) 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 but we don't want to talk for too long about this kind of stuff we definitely do not want to talk too much about ourselves however who are you chris johnson what do you do what's your vibe all right well briefly thanks for the intro yes i'm chris johnson a vocal coach uh i'm a vocal coach and professional singer in a nutshell um i started out life as uh, singing in soul bands and stuff with you in fact steve I'd like to point out. Um, and we turned those acts professional, so I spent the early part of my career just kind of singing on stage, and still do. But uh, my uh, journey through singing led me to uh, get vocal lessons in technique, because actually my singing voice wasn't really up to the uh, professional workload. And that kind of led me to teaching singing, as I, I learned a particular technique called speech level singing to help with my stage presence and stage singing. And uh, just got to the point where I ended up teaching it. And that was back in uh, 2008. And since then, I've been doing lectures for the last four years at the Academy of Contemporary Music, still perform and teach privately at uh, River Studios in Southampton. And now I'm part of a new network of teachers um, called uh, Vocology and Practice, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But what's, what's your background, brother? Right on. So much like, to be fair... I'm going to say this a lot. My life is very, very similar to yours. <laughs> Worryingly so. In fact, do I need to even... Yeah, just, just copy Done. and paste. Done. Copy and paste. I'm a professional singer teacher. I'm also a professional singer. I, I teach similar places to you, River Studios. I've taught at schools and colleges in the South, Guildford School of Acting, Wiltshire College. Let's rattle these off quick. Um, I, over the years, I have launched some organisations, projects, whatever you want to call them, Love Soul Choir, Love Soul Hype, Lunchtime Glee, and they're all ways to create a community of singers. And um, you know that's really important for me. It's, it's, it's one of the things I, I, I kind of live for, which is engaging with people and and the whole applied psychology thing. I love that. I love I love knowing what people are about, how they interact, and then what they can produce off the back of that as well. So that's really important to me. And that's helped me do that. Much like you, SLS, speech level singing, it, it, it was the beginning. It was the it? beginning. It was the foundation of my technical knowledge and has, has went on to, to give me so much. And um, it taught me so much over the years. Right now, as you just mentioned, we are lucky to be invited to the VIP Teacher Network based in Hollywood, America. And 
I know I speak for you in, in this that we're both very, very proud to be part of this. Absolutely. I mean, that network um, really welcomed us in, which is great. I mean, it's great for teachers and students, but from from our point of view, it is uh, one of the, one of the first things is primarily a network to share information. As as Steve pointed out earlier, which was kind of tongue in cheek at the time, but it's true. We don't know everything. Neither does anyone else. Mm. And so to have a, a network of people with different skills means that there is a gold mine of information for us as teachers to constantly dip into and share, even our knowledge with other people too, so that um, we can continually improve as teachers and continually, uh, and this will take a lifetime, I'm sure, to keep plugging in those gaps of knowledge so that each student you can help just that little bit more with what, what with whatever it is they're trying to achieve, right? Mm. And as you mentioned, we were lucky enough to be invited into the network. The criteria to actually join the network of the teacher is, is, is actually really high. Really high. And that, that again, is, is a really great thing because what it shows is that the teachers already involved in the network have, have got ability. They know their thing. And as you just said, that is very varied. Yes. And so we've got all these different pockets of experiences knowledge bases that all of us kind of interact with and we all learn from each other and we benefit from that but I guess more importantly the students our students will benefit from that in the long run yeah and and again that's uh, the student side of the ethos is you know student-centered learning that means that we are here to help the student with whatever it is they're trying to achieve with their voice and we are trying to help them do it healthily but optimise everything that they've already got. So we work with singers who sometimes have a strong identity and you don't want to be moving away from that sound that they've carved themselves out and probably are quite successful with it. We, we are always there to make sure that we're equipping those singers with the tools that they need to be able to do their job effectively, be ex- ex- as expressive as possible and in a healthy manner, right? Beautiful. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. That's the goal. And that's why we're doing this as well. Yes, we're getting free information out there to hopefully help you guys with a bit of guidance. Take from it what you will. Absolutely. But you can check out Vocology in Practice at vocologyinpractice.com and we'll refer to it as VIP um, in short often. But getting into what we're actually here for today, we are here to answer questions and hopefully provide useful information. And on the agenda today we have... Two questions. One, which is about warming up. Yeah, which we cannot get through without covering in depth. It's going to be a, it's going to be a long one, I think. That yeah, one. H- hold in. Yeah. Hold in. Belt up, long we'll, ride. We'll get a comedian for the halftime break. <laughs> and, uh, and then we're going to look at um, questions about compressors. Uh, and they are, they are things that are used on stage. That's the agenda. So if that's your thing, stick around. So. I'm excited. It's the first one. Go on. I think you're a little too excited. For this. <laughs> Settle down. <laughs> Hi boys, so can you help me? I'm rubbish at warming up and I know I should do it, but I struggle to find the time in brackets or interest. So maybe if I knew what the implications were, I'd do better. Brackets, scare tactics. (laughs) Tar, Claire Campbell Harding. (laughs) Over to you, Christopher. Okay, Claire. I'm not into scaring students, students are you. It's not my vibe. It's not, I don't think it's a great teaching environment. No. (laughs) However... (laughs) Maybe we can just explore some reasons as to why uh, warming up in general could be helpful for your singing and probably, I guess, Claire performs, so they can certainly help performances. But on a muscle fibre level, yawn, uh, we want to make sure that muscle fibres are getting blood flow, that they are kind of being stretched, they're becoming supple and coordinated. And so that can be the first thing that you can think about as being a benefit for warming up is that you get your vocal cords, which are muscle fibers, to become all of those things, supple, flexible, having blood flow. When that is the case, your voice would usually feel much better, more cooperative, more willing to go into the bottom and the top and all the different parts of your voice. And so you can go on stage with a bit more confidence that your voice is going to be working well and cooperating. Um, Sometimes I find that singers uh, do get on stage without a warm up. And when they're on stage, they do realize that actually my voice isn't working 
as well as it would normally do. Which isn't the time you want to find that out. You do not want to be (laughs) find out on stage because (laughs) you're going to freak out. (laughs) And God knows we've been there, right? Oh, I freaked out. I have freaked out. (laughs) And so being on stage thinking, oh God, like I can feel that note that's coming up is, is just not as it normally is. And why that is, who knows? But I tell you what, warming up that morning or that afternoon, long before the gig can give you an opportunity to see those sorts of problems arise. So that with a bit of technical knowledge and maybe some help from a vocal coach, uh, you may be able to actually resolve those issues way before you get on stage, mm. which means that you can, yeah, you can step out there and not be worried about what, you, what the job you've got to do. That's a great point because how many times, well, it outlines today may not be the best day. Yeah. Which, let's face it, you're a human being. These days do come. Yeah. But at least you know about it and see if you can work around it instead of getting to the gig and, and, and then finding out that you're a little bit puffy, something's getting you down a little bit, and you're not yeah. going to be on fire. And uh, there's a reason for it. Yeah. And, well, hey, think about the reasons of you might have gigged last night. You know, last night right, may have been a right. tough one. You met, you know, especially if you've gigged, you haven't slept. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like things, the tolls of life can just make warming up uh, a little harder. And sometimes you need to take a little longer in warming up. So yeah, absolutely. The stresses of life and day to day. When have you ever felt seven days in a row that you're... Every week, baby. Every abs- week. <laughs> you liar. <laughs> you lies. <laughs> Um, I see, yeah, I remember, I remember reading a, a quote from, uh, it was like a famous opera singer. It was in a book somewhere. I can't remember where, but the, the gist of the quote is, and he was a top draw singer. He said, if I could sing, um, at my abs- if I felt my absolute best and I sang on those occasions throughout the year, that would be about twice a year. Mm. <laughs> All the yeah. other times. And I completely relate to that. Absolutely. All the other times there was always something that he needed to warm up or always something that was just a little bit off. Yeah. You know, it's, it's very rare that you can step out on stage and just be absolutely perfect. And mm-hmm. yeah, again, warm ups can do that for you. And, uh, give yourself the best chance of the, finding that place. The best yeah. chance. Yeah. Some people actually, um, just sing a song to warm up and, uh, we'll get into, um, vowels and, uh, resonance, I guess in other episodes, maybe mm. this one, but just singing a song to warm up is not as effective as maybe some of the tips that that we're going to give you soon Sure. in this episode. Really? So what have you got to add on that front? Well, the question itself is, 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 <clears throat> is a tricky one. It's so vast. But for me, the, one of the most significant words in that sentence is interest. And, and the lack of. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess it's the, the psychological factors again. And, you know, we all know in life there's thing, good things that we should be doing and probably some bad things that we shouldn't be doing. But how often do we stick to those guidelines? <laughs> yeah. And for this in particular, I just feel that we do need to put some things in place, some strategies in place to try and give ourselves the best chance to get it done. Yeah, of succeeding in warming up. Exactly that, yeah. And and again, if you want to nail anything in life, one of the first things you can do is make a point of it and schedule it in. Be prepared. Be prepared, yeah. You know, I, I get hammered week in, week out about the gym and, and I'm sure other people do. Make it a priority. Put it in your diary. Put an hour in your, in your yeah. diary to, to go to the gym or do some fitness or to do whatever you want to do that you're not normally that good at doing. Mm. So for this, you... you don't need an hour, but you know, what's 15 minutes of a 24 hour day? Yeah. You know, and put it in your diary, then it's in, you know that it's there and it just becomes habit day in, day out. Yeah. I don't know what, I mean, for anyone who doesn't know, and I guess nobody would, Steve and I actually are in a band together. We do sing on stage together and prime time warm up is in the car. In the car. On the way yeah. to the gig, because we know that. That time is dead anyway. All we're going to talk about is probably food and, and weight. And definitely bore each other <laughs> to death. <laughs> yeah. We get very stressed out, actually, with each other <laughs> on long journeys. So, uh, but we often, yeah, we've got that CD in, in the player, which is our scales. Yep. That time is completely perfect for warming up. So, I don't know, that probably only takes us about 15, 20 minutes, right? Exactly. And uh, certainly I know, and you've said that, Without that warm up, 
Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes we actually don't have a long car journey. Mm. You know, that warm-up can be missed out just from the fact that the car journey is short. Um, after that warm-up in the car, I feel so much better when I get on stage. That's it. And you can squeeze, as long as you've got the CD there, again, it's another strategy to make sure that it's actually going to happen. You just said the CD in the car. If it's there, you're more likely, it's, it's more likely going to happen. Yep. And even if you have a short journey, then after you've set up, if that's your kind of gig, mm-hmm. you've got you've got an hour and a half. You're kicking around while the you know the wedding guests, if that's what you do, are having their cocktails. Yeah, <clears throat> you know, go out to the car, do it then. Yeah, and I know you said before as well that um, to to attach yourself to the great feelings that you get from a warm up with mm. the right warm up schedule and and regime. If it's a if it's really to the point and works the right things, then when you step on stage and your voice is banging that is i think again you've said the motivation for warming up because you're going to get out there and you're going to be stonking living in the benefits living in the benefits yeah so three points there schedule it schedule your warm-up stick a cd you have a cd in your car all, all times or on your ipod and and then love what happens when it happens yeah. when, when you do it yeah absolutely yeah so that's kind of that i guess that maybe helps the psychological side of things Yes. It's a bit of information, but let's get into like what, what we would do. Sure, okay, moving on. So kicking off body warm-ups, I would suggest sticking into the shoulder rotations. Yeah. Again, this stuff is all connected to the voice. And you do them both directions? You can do them both directions, can't you? Yeah, I, don't go in too hard. Okay, I've, yeah, I've, yeah. I've heard of some <laughs> rotator cuff injuries occurring from, <laughs> yeah, yeah. from this, especially if you're holding weight. Yeah. But yeah, so keep the weights out of it for the minute and just, just roll and just and make sure it's relaxed. And I think we've all got a pretty good, good idea of what's relaxed and what's comfortable. Yeah. So stick with that feeling. Bending over the waist. Hang, like when, you, when you just kind of hang there. Hang there. And breathe. Mm. Breathe slowly. Mm. That's the, the, the yoga talking. Mm. There. <laughs> yeah, but and we know you're partial to a bit of that. Partial to a bit of yoga, it's beautiful. Yeah, so so hang around in that in that pose, if we want to call it for a little while, and just just feel the benefits of that. And then moving up to the face, we need to get near the voice. So let's start moving that mouth around a little bit. Yeah, and quite literally move it to its its extremes. I've seen some YouTube videos of people, you know, these ones where <laughs> it's like, let's get rid of the lines on the face. I haven't seen that. Why am I looking at those videos? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I don't know. What I'm is not that looking then? at them. I, I saw somebody else looking at them. You get rid of the wrinkles. Oh, okay. You know? I haven't uh, seen it yet. Oh, oh I see. Yeah. So you just kind of open your mouth wide. For the purposes of this podcast, I'm so a really low jaw. Open my mouth wide. Uh huh. Yeah. And just bring it back in again. You do look push quite your lip, odd. Push your lip forward. Okay, lips forward. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for joining in. Nice. <laughs> And wide again. Do it low. Do do as much as you can just to get that moving. But I've heard you talk about this. So do a prison bars. Yeah, prison bars. Yeah, and I do really enjoy this because you have to make a ridiculous noise when you do it, right? Cool. But I saw it on the King's Speech. Weirdly, that film with Colin Firth in it. But I knew of it before then, anyway. But it's it's kind of like if you grab your hands out in front of you, like you're hanging on to some prison cell bars. And you shake them. We call, call it shake the bars. And you shake them, but you let your jaw kind of chatter as you do it. And you, I just, it really helps if you make the noise. Shall I do it? I, honestly, if you don't do it, I'm, I'm not going to think about it. <laughs> Here we go. It's like this. And I know that sounds completely ridiculous, right? But it, I can, I can feel my jaw relaxing as I do that. Yeah, I can. Yeah, it really does that. work. And um, uh, going on from that looking at the jaw, if you put your kind of palms in front of your ears and you bite, you would feel those jaw muscles just lump out. You know, they're the ones that would activate when you're chewing. And they can get tight for some people um, in the act of singing or actually people who may grind their teeth at night, you know, or sometimes a bit of stress can get those activated. They can inhibit the jaw movement in singing, which is super important mm. that that jaw isn't inhibited. So actually getting in those and actually rub, massaging them out actually feels unreal. I'm doing it right now. Um, that can really help those to relax and maybe facilitate some of those mouth movements that you were just doing. Yeah. To get this whole That's it. I mean, you just made a good point there about the, the stiffness of the jaw and how it affects. There's different le- everyone's going to have a different level of, of what they do. You know, I've, you know, I've heard people speak about the fact they chew their mouth off when they're sleeping. You know, yeah. that's a different level of tension to somebody else. 
But I know for me, I mean, like I, I, these these exercises, these body warm ups. I I didn't. I used to question them, mm. and uh, it was only when I figured out that everything is connected in the body that I realised they actually do work. Oh yeah, and. Bearing in mind that when I wake up in the morning, I know for a fact I am literally the stiffest man in the world, <laughs> yeah. and my my mouth is, you know, it's 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 just not a, a, a place where efficient sound is gonna <laughs> is going to occur. So, so the uh, the breakfast trill is not a good one. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I know now that I need to do like say this this ma- kind of massage of the face, get get it moving, because look, I mean, I could I could jump into some exercises or some song, and I could get through it. But I'm not even aware at that point of how stiff my my mouth is because I'm living with it. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You know. So, and it ha- could be the difference between actually good singing and great singing. Exa- exactly that. And I think it's worth just even if you if you don't think you're you're that stiff, give it a go and, and see mm. the effect. And I just thought actually that um, some of the especially hanging at the waist may not be good in the car. <laughs> I wouldn't. I don't know if you think. It, Maybe that might be saved for another another day. Yeah, I mean, look, if, if when I'm when I'm driving to the next gig, give it a go. <laughs> and if I, you could, out the window, <laughs> that'd be actually. Yeah. yeah, or just wait till you get there. Should we do that one? Okay. Probably best advice. Are we? Are we all right? Yeah. Good. Well, good. 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 So, but we should talk about really moving on to actual sounds, as that's that is that is. You know, not taken away from physical warm-ups, but that's where most of the work is, has to be done, right? Yep. So, um, starting with, I guess, right at the start, with the bottom of the voice, what would you suggest? I would jump straight in with some some humming, right? of all things. Yeah. Yeah, again, we're talking about getting the chords agile and flexible, and there's no better thing for that, really, mm. than... Mm, 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 mm. I mean, you can feel that buzz. I mean, it's, it's a, a start for ten, right? It's a beautiful feeling. Uh-huh. We get into this in more depth later on, I'm sure. But I mean, in in in, in, um, in terms of the scales we're going to use, but if I if I could jump in where the male would 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 normally start, we're talking chest voice here. We don't want to get too crazy with this. It's just like we say to get the chords moving. And this scale here is is what we call a five tone scale. It's, it's short, it keeps you in that area for a, for a period, and for guys starting on the C3, yeah. just take it up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And again, that should feel easy all the way through and comfortable. Yeah. This little buzz going on. I actually really like that feeling. Yeah, and I same. don't know what that says about me, but it's but do, do you know what I mean? Yes, absolutely. It yeah. feels like uh feels like your voice is starting to become energized. <laughs> exactly that. Yeah. 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 And you feel the difference as soon as you just start speaking afterwards. Females just to let you you know we're talking the G3 maybe an A flat. Yeah. We're going to kick off there again. That's all we're going to do. Right on. Just to get that moving a tiny bit. And I say you'll feel the differences straight away. We're going to get onto more of the scale type stuff in, in, in a bit, but, but that's, that's a good starter. Yeah, that's a good starter. And that just, yeah, the mouth is closed. It's, it, you can't get too loud on that. It should feel relaxed, like you said. And, and sort of moving on from that, mm. where weirdly, yeah, we can do a lot of exercises with the mouth closed purely because, you know, that does, it does keep intensity a little lower. It helps the vocal cords to not be under a lot of pressure while we're getting the, the muscle fibres to warm up. So you've got one there. The other one that we can look at is a lip trill. Right. Or a tongue trill. I'm not so great at tongue trills. Can you do one? Definitely not. <laughs> but that's where someone would go purr, whatever it is. Or can what? you just have another go at that just to see? Purr. <laughs> but ideally, my tongue would be flapping back and forth. Yeah, and just, just to clarify, apparently you can either do one or the other. We're built for this. Some people can do both, but the norm is you can either do one or the other. Yeah, and um, for me, it is lip trills. And if you can kind of visualise this, right? If if you guys start by putting your fingers on your jawline, either side of your ear, from there, slightly raising your cheeks, being careful not to obstruct your lips at all, this, this does help. And then to go like this. <laughs> And rubble your lips like that with a sound underneath it. Can I just add there that yeah. I think that 
most mostly when people just kick this off, there's a lot of uh, this is the most craziest thing I've ever done in my entire life. I look like an idiot. I'm definitely not doing it. The benefits are amazing. So if you start off and you feel like it's something you can't do, I would try doing all that sound first. So just put, yeah, yeah. Because normally you can get that function going first, and then see if you can add the sound in behind it. Yeah, and because you know it is, it is one of the first things we would do as students. But I tell you what, it takes the most practice. Well, it and the most, <laughs> doesn't it? Yeah, getting over the laughs, getting over the yeah, yeah. yeah. And for some people who turn to their side when they do it in my teaching room, they're quite aware that there is sometimes mist of spit <laughs> that comes off of this that I sometimes have to wipe off of my face. Bad teacher. That's where you got the time. And they are considerate and turn away. So I'm happy with that. But yeah, so this is this is purely because the lips are closed. They are creating sort of a help. They help to resist the airflow that's coming out. They do take the, the pressure off the vocal cords. And so this is the perfect warm-up again. But we tend to use this one on a longer scale so that we can get into higher parts of our range. Not forgetting that the vocal cords are quite relaxed during this exercise so getting higher tends to be a little more or a little easier yeah it aids it it aids it and so we would take a scale that's uh, on an octave and a half can you play that that's it and that that kind of goes from the bottom register and it's starting to dip into the top and so yeah play it again i'll go like so that's that's the kind of gist of it is that it's easing me into the top it's getting the vocal cords again moving under under less pressure and that is another sort of logical step towards singing and worth pointing out that if it falls apart at any point during that exercise it's normally the case that it's that it's not working out quite you know quite as it should. Yeah, and and the great thing about the the lip bubble and the tongue trill is that they it, it's like a measurement. They tell you if if it if, if it, falls, it squeezes it squeezes or, you yeah. know or you've blown too much air. So it's about getting that balance. And and I know it may be a bit of a trial and error. Yeah. Finding the degree of control. Yeah, but that's that's part of the learning, you know, and, and uh, it, I just think it's a brilliant thing that it tells you that. Yeah, it highlights, again, things for you to work on. Yeah, you're right, it's almost like a diagnostic. Yeah. Um, and, and just a, a top tip for that one is, for most people, to, to the sound underneath it to be kind of slightly hooty like that. A little bit dumb sounding. That helps you to kind of ease into the top with as little tension as possible. And working towards, especially in the lower part, into that uh sound behind, uh, behind what you do. Yeah. You can hear behind it the vowel sound is uh. Yeah. Yeah. As opposed to something like e, which would be... Right. Which would sound tight and weird anyway, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's, that's where we're at with... Uh, Awesome. With kind of getting into things, but but when we move to actual sounds, which would probably be helpful, helpful at this point, <laughs> unless you want to sing everything on the lip, but we're you. <laughs> and there is a song we do in our gigs called Reap Petite, where we do incorporate. It's supposed to be a tongue, petite. It's supposed to be a tongue thrill, that it is, but yeah. neither of us can do it. So mm. yeah. sometimes it, turn it into an O. Oh, Reap Petite, yeah. like that. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> so uh, yeah, you can use it in song, as we proved. But uh, but so moving on to actual sounds. What are, you, what are your kind of favourite ones to move on after a, after a lit trill? It's again, this is no, this is no, this is the right way to do. Yeah, it. this is this is the wrong way. But for me personally, I I definitely like using an E sound. Yeah, to work through again because we know that certain consonants restrict airflow. That's their job, and that's that's their training tool. That's why we use them in, in that situation. So removing them to begin with is probably going to give us a an easier route through through our registers and through our voice yeah. to begin with. And again, keeping that, things should be easy at this point. Could we just explore in the different parts of our voice at this, at this stage? Totally. So I would, you know, I'd take it on a, again, a 1.5 to get from the bottom to the top and... Right on, you know. Yeah. Absolutely. What about you? What would you What would you add to that? I, you know, I usually go into those as well. But um, and and E for me is is a, another is a good vowel when I sing it. And for students, it depends on yeah where they're at with their voice and how their tone of voice is. But sometimes a good substitute for E is ooh. Mm. 
Um, just because it's a bit darker sounding, for some people it can feel a bit more relaxed and get to the top. So I tend to experiment between those two on myself and whatever. And certainly I would I would take the same approach of just, yes, yeah, sirening up. If you don't have the ability to um, listen to scales and you might be in a position where you want to be doing some, some sirens, just some glides up and down. Again, you know, just uh, it's not very accurate, but yeah, in times when you don't have a scale, right. it's, it, it's better than nothing. And just for your guide, again, these should be comfortable, consistent, balanced, and by balance, it, I guess that's just a kind of vague word to explain that things aren't going wrong, you know, and, and feeling the difference between and yeah yeah you know there's, there's grey areas there but you can tell the difference totally yeah and you know what maybe, maybe in future episodes when we do some more technical problem solving stuff we could we could look into maybe why why does a voice kind of squeeze and crack on the way up you know a warm up may not necessarily solve that but you can just you know adjusting your voice and making sure volume doesn't get out of control and, and you remain relaxed hopefully that outcome that you've just demonstrated will, will get less and less mm. just from you just trying to be kind of composed Absolutely. as you do it. Yeah. So, so that's, that's what I would kind of do. Um, <clears throat> but then, yeah, moving on from that, you know, that how long would you say you'd spend doing that? Maybe 10 minutes, all that bunch? Yep. Yeah, that's, that's great. It's, again, personal preference and, and what you're feeling. If, if you have one of those days where things are a bit puffy and you're not on top of the world, you may need a little longer. That's yeah. the way, where the world, you know, yeah. there's, there's no definitive here. But And, uh, you know, I, I, I certainly experienced times in my life where my voice was slow to warm up. Yep. It, it took ages. And this was primarily actually when I was singing in the morning or when I had to teach lectures. And there was two things that I actually, actually did about that with the help of someone else was when you wake up in the morning, you spend all night dehydrating. And I tell you what, my warm ups are not effective if I'm dehydrated. Mm. It's almost like they just don't work, but the suppleness of your vocal cords will be largely down to how hydrated they are and your voice will feel so much better. So, you know, when you wake up in the morning and you've got to sing and warm up for, for an early time, two pints of water as soon as you wake up is like mandatory. Are we doing the, are we doing a full nutrition breakdown now? Yeah, we can <laughs> do. Yeah. Another podcast. Yeah. And no curry before you go to bed. I think is another <laughs> bit of advice because of reflux. Um, but, uh, is that the only reason? It's the, yeah, well, probably weight gain. I thought would have thought was another one. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's your two reasons not to eat curry. <laughs> so, restricted to early times. Um, but yeah, so drinking water in the morning, certainly made a massive difference to me being able to sing early on too but I also found that not spending too long on them but some slightly more staccato and by staccato we mean kind of choppy stop start like this ah 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 that is a staccato sound ah is legato so that's just the differences but Sometimes that those staccato sounds can get your muscle fibers just to kind of rub together a little more just to get blood flowing and subtlety, suppleness rather, into the vocal cords, just a little quicker to speed up that warm up process. I just, I just felt that my voice didn't didn't warm up quick enough, and they certainly helped in certain situations. Mm. If you, but on on a side note, if you do feel like your voice is kind of a bit crappy in the mornings, uh, that could be partly due to dehydration and what happened the day before and all that stuff, but. Um, persistent hoarseness in the morning. Some people might want to look into that as being reflux, and that's more of a it's medical common. medical thing. It is really common, actually, isn't it? No, lots of people get treated for that. Um, so, anything else you want? I mean, on from the on from the e's and the oos and 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 the yeah. kind of freeing things up. Where would you go from there? Well, warming up sometimes gets just restricted to the muscle fibers, and just you know, if your muscle fibers are warmed up and they're kind of supple, that is good, and that is. Not for me where the warm-up ends, because I think really we want to be warming up or, or more specifically like calibrating your voice to handle the more um, the, or the tasks that are more related to your singing on stage. And they are things like crescendos and, and decrescendos is where I might start off. And that is where you kind of get louder and quieter progressively 
on on any any sort of sound maybe i'll take the one no for instance and that gets your voice used to the dynamic levels that you're going to be singing in so so it's not a shock when you go loud for your voice and you would sort of start off quiet get progressively louder and then quiet like this no 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 like that and so yeah you can get your vocal cords to be responding to more airflow getting used to that spike in volume, but not so it's a spike, so it's a shock. That's one of the things I would do. One of the other things are sustaining with vibrato is that is another thing that singing requires is sustains. Mm. So again, taking the same exercise, can you give me maybe an F? Okay. So yeah, hit the, hit the, hit the, um, the word four times with a sustain on the end and vibrato. No, 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 no. No, 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 is one that I would do on, on, you know, all pitches, in fact, as many that you actually have to sing in for your repertoire. And you'll, you'll get to know which words and vowels work best for you when doing that so that you can always make your life easy and start sustaining on stuff that is easy for you. Then the next thing I would move on would be um, actual vowel changes. Um, we'll get into other episodes, but vowels do affect resonance in a big way, they affect your voice so profoundly that you want to make sure between the vowels that you would say, there are no sort of shocks Mm. or no problems. And so that's where I would take a bunch of vowels, sustain and change on them throughout different parts of my range like this. No, 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 nay, nay, na, 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 na. And being careful that between all those all those changes that tonally there's consistency there. My mouth isn't moving too much between those vowels. I'm trying to keep myself kind of relaxed, but, but consistent so that when I change vowels, my resonance and my stability up there is not disturbed. So when you get in the tunes, um, those vowels and those pitches and the way you need to sing them, you can just make sure that they are never going to be a shock for you. Mm. And and you can you can solve issues that may arise doing that quickly. Yeah, yeah I, I love that. And just for the sake of, of anyone, you know, trying that stuff at home, I think it's worth mentioning there that obviously you spent a few years working on your voice. And, yes. and, and th- that, that last section you, you went on to there with the, the dynamics and the changing of the vowels, and you obviously have some serious consistency across all those vowels there, it may not come that that easy to everyone. Totally. So, you know, d- don't have a go at yourself if, if it doesn't work out. And, and even as far as... We're almost looking at a kind of workout there, aren't we? Yeah. With the vowel change. I, I know, what's the point of putting names on things? But I, I do look at it that way. The, the, the warm-up is more towards finding what works for you, finding your home vowels, like what what works, what makes you feel comfortable, what gets you in the right places. And then as you just said, moving on to the more advanced stuff yeah. in order to make sure that it, it holds together across everything in your range. Totally. Yeah. And, you know, going down the line, especially if you study with a teacher, um, you'll pick up knowledge about vowels and consonants, resonance and vo- vocal function that will help you to achieve those more advanced warm-ups um, even easier and understand why things might go wrong in them, which will give you the power then to make the adjustment, which will then solve your issue, help you warm up really effectively. And then again, we're back to getting on stage and feeling awesome. On everything. On everything. That's the thing. Uh, yeah. That's the end goal. So I think that really, I, I guess warm ups could go further than that, but oh. do you think that is quite, quite sort of helpful? I think I think some good steps there, some some easy to follow steps. Yeah, kind of the the body warm ups into making things easy with some with some funny sounds, and then on to some some sounds that we're closer to closer to actual singing across the scales. Yeah, and then as you just said, going on to the advanced stuff, which will move from your comfortable sound onto something that may test you a little bit more, but then enable you to. Be consistent. Be consistent across everything. You totally. Know, yeah. But lastly, I know I'm very conscious of time here because things are cracking on and we and we and we spend so much time rambling. But <laughs> we have to mention the straw. The straw is a uh, is a legendary thing. A legendary thing. And and, and to squeeze it in at the end of this section, I, it's not giving it credit. But we've got to because we haven't got all day. Totally. So the straw, you may have seen it online, but we are literally talking about. 
singing Fo- through a straw. Vocalising, yeah, with a cocktail straw. <laughs> <laughs> Which, shame on you, you probably stole off a bar in a cocktail bar. Is that shameful? That's where I got these. So, <laughs> I, got, I got a whole handful and put them in my girlfriend's handbag. <laughs> it doesn't mean everyone does that, though, does it? Well, um, well, I mean, it's... I've seen some people order them from Amazon just to get the uh, yeah, things in order. I never remember. The only time I remember to order them is when I'm stood ordering a Jaeger bomb. So, uh, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> so, <laughs> drinking Jaeger bombs through straws now, that's... That's not part of the advice on the warm-ups, but that is where I got the straw for. So in, I'm in handing t- it to you. Thank you. In terms of the voice. <laughs> in terms of the voice. <laughs> and away from Jaeger bombs. <laughs> the straw, like... All of the what we call semi occluded workouts, these do a great job of balancing air pressure and airflow. That's mm-hmm. that's what they do best. And going back to the lip bubble, you know if you screw it up, if you blow too much air, it's going to fall apart. The straw kind of doesn't even give you that amount of flexibility, you know. So um, it helps us produce sound more efficiently. This is the bottom line. Mm-hmm. And the guy that, that kind of created this. Technique, if you Technique like. Technique, or I want to call it, I don't know, like, um, what's, it, what's, it, what's the word for something that's, that's uh, all the rage these days? Oh, uh, 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 a fad. <laughs> fad. <laughs> it's not a fad. That makes it sound negative. And he's a highly intelligent man. Like, like yogging. It's when you put one foot in front of the other for an extended period of time. <laughs> so, Dr. Ingo Tietze, the guy that created the straw fad... <laughs> <laughs> but it is so ruddy useful, yeah. isn't it? Watch it. I mean, his, his video is, is brilliant. You can even catch him uh, singing the American National Anthem through through the straw, which is which is amusing. It's amusing, but it's obviously got got a uh, got a reason, and it does amazing things. So, just so you know, you've got your cocktail straw. It's super thin one, right? That's right. If you want to get involved in it, again, keeping the, the tone steady, keeping it relaxed, keeping it consistent. We can't blow a lot of air through this, but we just want to do the sirens as we did with uh, with your exercises earlier on. Yeah. So, for example, you just stick it between your lips. And just to comment, just for commentary, Steve is literally just singing right through that straw, doing sirens and and progressive kind of hills up and down, up and down, and a little further and a little further again. And uh, the sound that's coming out of there is small, right? But small. Um, the effort behind it is is of normal singing or, or you know reasonable speech. It's not excessively quiet in effort, but the straw makes it quiet. So make sure, yeah, you are sort of of a medium intensity. Yeah, your normal singing voice. Exactly that, and then you can move on to some kind of accenting stuff, like um, Dr. Ingo Tutte talks about. <laughs> So they're progressive hills. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, and then, you, as he does as well, go on to sing your song through the straw, which, and I tell you, I mean, I'm feeling it now just talking, and my, my voice is, is, is feeling some energy yeah. right now, and, 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 and that is just such a lovely feeling as a singer to feel that. So have a go. That's the straw covered. That's the straw covered. It has many other uses, but I bet you it will come up in other episodes. Yeah, oh, and one last thing about the consistency of airflow and pressure Again, another thing to add to this is to stick the straw in water and see if you can make the ripples consistent as you're blowing through the straw. Wow. It's another great measurement in order to make sure you're doing things What's right. the guy that does that on, on YouTube again? Can't remember. Oh, sorry. We'll put it on the, we'll put it on the Facebook page, but yeah. there, is a, there is a chap that does it, but, um, but we will be releasing videos. Tom that. Burke. Tom Burke. There we go. Pop straight in there. Out of nowhere. Well done. You were under pressure there as Thank well. Thank you. About stress, but I got through it. So I think, I think, yeah, that covers warm ups with the with the straw there. Um, if you've got any more questions about that, obviously you can get in touch with us um, directly. Uh, directly. But maybe we should um, we should move on to our our next question. Yeah, and probably make it our last question for today. I think because of the time. Yes, we'll cover some more in the next episode, of course. Okay, but so moving on. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll ask this one as well. Hello, boys. This came through on Facebook, by the way. I'd like your thoughts on the best way to get vocal dynamics while seated playing piano. I'm intending to go out as a solo pianist slash vocalist and know that to use mic technique... Oh, sorry. And know how to use mic technique. But as a more rigid seated pianist, I'm concerned that vocals could get boomy or lost as I look down at the keys. Do you recommend using a compressor or would this do more harm than good to dynamics? Cheers, Neil Zebedee. 
Right great on. question. Yeah, great question. I mean, he's obviously thinking about his uh, stage presentation a lot. And uh, yeah, first and foremost, to have a great sound when you're on stage, good consistency, it just makes the pleasurable listening so much more likely for anyone, really. But let's, should I just talk about what a compressor is? I think it's worthwhile to yeah, start very quickly. With. Thank you. So a compressor is a, a, a magical contraption uh, that uh, singers, and actually can be used on other instruments, um, use. And what it does, it basically balances out uh, a vocal. Uh, the mic would go through it, and whichever part of the performance is excessively loud, the compressor senses that and super quickly and very subtly can just turn that volume down just that little bit so that it doesn't offend anybody in the room. So it's like the singing would be good, but the, the, uh, the intensity might just be too high. And similarly, on the bottom, if someone gets too quiet or becomes really tender with their voice, then it turns them up a little bit so that the quiet bits come up so you can hear it and the loud bits come down so you're not offended by it. And so you end up with a, a vocal that becomes, yeah, just a little easier to listen to and can help singers to, uh, yeah, be able to, um, with with, uh, with equipment and great speakers to give a great performance. Is that Again, of, yeah, talking about balance, that's what it is, consistency and balance again, funny enough, that's what we're coming back to, isn't it? Absolutely. And uh, that that's what the contraption is, essentially. And uh, I really love them. It would really help, though, I think, um, and this is something that I definitely haven't mastered, being that I play a couple of instruments fairly badly, is that the compressor would definitely help but to basically rehearse the keys so much that they become absolutely second nature. You never need to look at the keys whilst playing the songs. Neil says he looks down quite a bit. And uh, that may take a bit of time, and uh, you have to sort of work on muscle memory for that, but if you play them enough and rehearse them to absolute death, you will not have to look down at the keys as often. And so you can probably get your mouth closer to the mic and have a more consistent and better sound anyway. Plus your performances will probably get get better as a result. So yeah, two sides of it. The pro compressor will help, but massively rehearsing the keys would definitely help you to keep your attention on the microphone. Searching would you say? Yeah, we absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I totally agree. And, and with experience using compressors in, in the stuff that we've done, I... I would I would recommend them. Again, looking at the people in the industry that are, I guess you could, you could say are being successful. Yeah, Stevie Wonder, who? Some 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 old fella some on old piano. Fella. Yeah, he's done some <laughs> stuff. <laughs> but probably more well known. I'm not sure. Tom York from Radiohead, perhaps. These guys all play piano and, and they sing at the same time. Yeah, um, the guy from Muse, Matthew Bellamy. They're all doing it, and you see that they, they are using compressors. So as they are at the top of their game and they're using them, it kind of paints a bit of a picture. Absolutely, yeah. And for the, just the high-end sound, if you want to sound that good. But with high-end, it comes cost, right? Exactly, and, and that is it. it. In life, we have to weigh everything up, and if you can afford one, go for it. What if, are they, like 200 quid at the bottom end, do you think? Or maybe maybe a little less. Should have researched that, really, shouldn't we? Yeah, yeah but, but but really, you know, if, if you are maybe professional, making money from it, wow, it would it would help your sound. Yeah, it's an investment. Think yeah. of it as an investment for the future. There's many things, when, and again, we're going to these, in the future, performing, if it's going to save you long term, go for it. Yeah, totally. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. So I hope that helps, Neil. Um, are we, are the vote is yes, essentially. Do it. Absolutely. Well, I think that concludes our questions. Thank you to the to those who sent them in. But as a kind of a kind of a regular thing, every episode, we would quite like to maybe force upon you a snippet from the internet. A thing from uh, from YouTube or something that is of interest musically, singing wise or so a weekly feature. A feature, exactly. So we can uh, we can just force that upon you. So what is your your feature what, for this week? Oh what what we what, what we're calling this feature? Are we calling it something? Um, I don't know, something of the fortnight? YouTube listen of the fortnight? We are restricting ourselves to YouTube at that let's point. Let's not do YouTube, let's, let's do... Let's, let's do a uh, web pick of... Uh, web of fave. The, a web fave of the fortnight. Oof. All right, so... Have we got a jingle? Should have... Again, we, unpreparedness shines through. 
uh, which is great. But yeah, our web pick of the fortnight. Web fave. I like fave, but is uh, we right, we'll, 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 we'll argue about that in the coffee shop. Uh, go for it. Right, we were singing at a wedding a couple of weeks ago. First dance. First, I always love a first dance because it, it normally it's normally a beautiful song. Open your eyes to something new. This song was a song called "God Bless Our Love" by Al Green. You agree? Amazing song. It was lovely. Yeah. So it sent me on a bit of a journey on YouTube, and I was searching around. Off the back of that tune, I found some more Al Green songs, and this song is a song called "Raining in My Heart," and it's off the 2003 "I Can't Stop" album. I even did some research. So. Lovely. It's an amazing song. This performance is very raw, very natural, which is, let's face it, they're the best ones. And he would have been even quite old when he recorded that in 2003, right? Yeah, 60, is he 67 now or is he 60? So he would have been 57. Wow, yeah, so he's still recording great stuff at that age. Yep. Amazing. Yeah. So he's, he's, he's really got it. But he mutters something at the end and it's a beautiful thing. Lovely moment. Lovely moment. And I think it's something that we can all incorporate more of in our life. So have a, have a look at that and, and, and just... So we're searching for Rain In My Heart. Rain In In My Heart. Rain In In My Heart yeah. by Al Green on YouTube. That's it. Cool. Rocking. So that's it. That's our uh, whatever we're going to decide for it to be called next time. But that's us done. So just to, just to finish up, a couple of things to mention if we could. Our website... Very exciting. Our website is coming soon. But if you're looking for us at the moment, you can find us on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Facebook.com forward slash TNV questions. TNV, the naked vocalist. TNV. You got just, just in case you're wondering what the hell that meant. Twitter is the same. It's at TNV questions. Oh, and, uh, yeah, in fact, if you, if you find us on, on those social media places... places and you see something that says subscribe to email list, make sure you jump on it, guys, because that means you just receive this stuff automatically to your inbox. Mm. And we will only, only send you, not too often, relevant stuff regarding uh, information you would want to know and updates on future podcasts. Stuff that's going to help. Yeah. The Naked Vocalist TV has just gone live as well. And that's on YouTube. It's all over the place. <laughs> on YouTube. So search YouTube for The Naked Vocalist TV. And we will. Um, we talked about warm-ups earlier. There will be a warm-up video on there that you can go and check out. Yep. And, uh, and you know, look forward to the, to the video of Chris doing the, the shaking of the bars. <laughs> that's my face. <laughs> we'll block me out on yeah. that one. That'd be lovely. So, and lastly, please subscribe on iTunes. The, uh, aside from the fact that You'll always be up to date, and they, I think they get downloaded automatically, don't they? If, if you select it, yeah, but it's certainly you You would be told when a new episode is out, right? and right. Uh, you would never miss one. Yeah, so aside from, aside from that, the, the iTunes wizards who put everything together for us, they, they, they love a bit of engagement. They do. Yeah, and so on that, if you can leave us a review as well, positive review is always good. <laughs> Five star. Five stars is always, I mean... I always find that's the best one. That's the best one, and it's the easiest one. Most appreciated. Thank you if you could do that. It's cool. So that is us. We are out. We would love you, obviously, to keep asking questions. Ask, ask, ask us anything you want, as we will get special guests and, uh, and any other way we can get that information to you through this podcast, then we will. So future episodes, get along to the Facebook and all those other mediums that we discussed, and ask us a question about your voice. No matter what, or your career. Nothing's too easy. Nothing's too small, or too big. Or too stupid. Or, yeah, okay. <laughs> we'll decide that, we just won't say them. <laughs> so that is us done. Lovely. The Naked Vocalist podcast, episode one, has concluded, and it will be fortnightly. So please do tune in to the next one. So it's goodbye from me, Chris Johnson. And goodbye from me, Steve Giles. Good day. Bye for now.